Welcome to We Don't Have Cookies Presents The Life, recorded live in studio at Don Smith and Jason Marshall. All right, you're listening to WWSU 106.9 FM, Fairborn, Dayton's Right Choice. This is Right State Radio, and you've turned into the, tuned in, tuned in, not turned in, you've tuned into the life. Uh, this is Jason's show tonight. He's yeah, we're going to be showcasing a lot of people who have uh, come on board to the podcast. They're going to be doing segments for the show. It's taken two two-hour-long radio shows to get them all on, and we still haven't done it yet. So that's, that's uh, quite a bit of new faces for the podcast. I'm really looking forward to that. A lot of new segments coming up. So. Yeah, if you go to the website, we don't have cookies.com and you go to the bio section, there's a lot of new people on there. It's uh, pretty impressive looking. I got to got to say there's some talented people that have come on board. Couldn't be happier. And one of them's going to be on here in uh, about 2 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Natasha start, Pearl start Hansen. Right off. Natasha Pearl Hansen. Yeah, she'll be headlining the Laugh Factory in Chicago tomorrow night. I'm sure we'll talk about that. So you know she's funny if she's headlining the Laugh Factory. So yeah, we're we're going to be busy tonight. It looks like yeah, people from three different countries will be calling in and a, a few different states. Natasha, she's from well, she's from Chicago, moved out to L.A. and she's visiting Chicago right now. So we got California covered. We're going to have people from New Zealand, Canada, and the U.K. calling in too. So. And almost almost had Australia. Yeah, that unfortunately, been, we're going to have to reschedule that one, but, uh, you know, things well, you happen. Know, we, we do the show every week, so we might have another opportunity. Yeah, hopefully. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we uh, have Natasha on the line here, so let's see. Hey, Natasha, how's it going? Hello, hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, sound good. Sweet. Now, this is comedian Natasha Pearl Hansen. She's had a lot of things going on in her life between doing comedy, acting, producing, writing <laughs> she's uh yeah <laughs> she's been very busy yeah i have been uh thank you for taking note of that <laughs> but i also take plenty of time to drink beer so i try to keep everything pretty balanced you know well you gotta have I'm that from the balance. midwest originally so we gotta keep it real <laughs> <laughs> you've also been a, a contributor for men's health magazine yeah which had to be nice for you because you also are very into fitness yeah, I am. It's it's funny because I feel like there's such a shift in, uh, not in just comedy right now, but in just kind of how everybody's just worried about taking care of themselves. I had uh, kind of started getting heavier into fitness a couple of years ago and uh, got into Muay Thai. And because I work at night and I have a lot more free time during the day than most people, it's been really easy for me to get into. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it kind of coincided with men's health, uh, liking my humor, and it just kind of worked out in this nice little marriage of fitness and comedy. You're originally from Chicago, is that right? No, I'm oh, okay. originally from Wisconsin, but I started comedy in Chicago, so it's not completely wrong. <laughs> but um, I never, I never want to be one of those people that pretends I'm from a place that I'm not from. So I am from Wisconsin <laughs> and proud of it. <laughs> but. Uh, my family's from Chicago. My mom's side of the family is from the south side of Chicago. And my dad's side of the family is from Wisconsin. So they just kind of decided to keep me um, keep me out of the potential for having a street kid and uh, <laughs> put me on the farm instead. So <laughs> not that one is safer than the other, to be honest. But they, uh, that's what they chose. <laughs> and you got your start in Second City. Mm -hmm. How was that experience for you? It had to be pretty... Um pretty interesting because so many talented people have come out of there yeah I mean it was it was the best thing ever I still I I just got into Chicago today to come in um I'm playing Laugh Factory tonight and headlining tomorrow and I'm walking through my old neighborhood and one of my friends from Second City uh that you that used to live in my old neighborhood with me texts me out of nowhere like we all still stay in touch it's kind of this beautiful it's like a fraternity, but I hate to use that word because frats just make me feel <laughs> gaggy a little bit. But <laughs> um, it, it kind of is like when people know that you came out of there, too, even if they didn't go at the same time as you, everyone's kind of willing to help each other out. And uh, it makes for a really good system, when, especially when you move to a place like Los Angeles and have to get your bearings. A lot of the people are willing to kind of show you the ropes. And that was really, really nice. Did you have any interest in going into stand-up before you went to Second City? Actually, no. Um, it's funny because 
I was young, obviously. When I started Second City, I was 21. I moved to Chicago when I was 21. And uh, I thought that I was so cool for being just an improviser. It was, I thought it was so fucking awesome. Can I say fuck? I don't know if I can. Um, <laughs> that I just made up my stuff as I went. I thought I was so awesome. I, it's so funny when you look back on it and you're like, what was wrong with me? Uh, <laughs> I thought I was, I was way too proud to do stand up. I thought it was so much better to make up your material as you went. And it's like one day it just switched for me and I just got really annoyed of some improvisers because I worked at the bar across the street from Second City and these improvisers came in and I was like, what do you guys want to order? And they were like, oh, I don't know, waka waka. And I was like, you guys suck. I need some more serious people in my life. So they yes and uh, drinks. <laughs> what was that? They yes and drinks, huh? Oh my God, the yes and a drink. Oh, that's it's not like, even right. <laughs> you know, with, with stand up, I feel like more people are able to turn it off at times. I mean, I still hang with improvisers too. I think it just takes time for people to weed that feeling of needing to be on out of their system. But uh, it was nice to transition into stand up. It was like a whole new underground world that I had no idea about. And it was, it, I was hooked the second I started. You eventually moved to L.A. Did you notice any difference between the two uh, two cities? Oh, wildly different. I mean, night and day. When I moved to Chicago, it was just such an easy city. It was a bigger version of everything that I had ever seen before. I had lived in Minneapolis. I would lived in Madison. So it was just like a bigger, better version of that. It was a clean city. For In general, I felt safe. I know it's probably not that case the case now, but, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was great. And people were so easy to meet. It was just a very open and accepting city. And so many of my friends weren't in entertainment. So it was a really healthy balance. You know, we were all interested in each other for our personalities rather than what anybody was up to. And LA was definitely, it was definitely really hard at first. Um, you think everybody's going to have time for you and then you move there and you realize everybody's got their AM to PM hustle and nobody cares that you moved to their city. And uh, <laughs> so it was definitely, it took, it took a much longer to feel like LA was home. And now it always feels a little funny coming back to Chicago because it feels like a former life at this point, but I love it here. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a very interesting but, spin on it. Because I've, yeah. I've heard the same thing about L.A. from a lot of people. It takes a little while to get adjusted. It does. I mean, I think you really, I feel like I've heard this from a lot of my favorite people. And what it's really about is finding, finding your people. You have to find people that inspire you and that you enjoy just being around. And who cares what they do? Like my group of friends are everything from DJs to dancers to nurses to government employees, like, I don't care what anybody does. It's so much more refreshing that way if you just meet people because you like who they are. And I feel like that is something that takes a lot more time in LA because everyone's more guarded there because they're trying to weed out the same, they're either trying to weed people out in the same way, or they're trying to climb their way to the top and they'll just push you off to the side after they find somebody better. You know, so it's kind of this blend of people and it takes you a little bit of digging to find the awesome. But when you do, they're really, really awesome. <laughs> well, speaking <laughs> of finding people, that's one reason I wanted to have you on is we're going to debut a new segment on the podcast by you. And I wanted yeah. to thank you for coming on board because that's uh, that's really awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I am, too. Um, and I know you're you kind of encompass a lot of things on this podcast, correct? Yeah, we have a lot of different contributors from a lot of different walks of life. So yeah. it, it should and be I a good time. I think that's healthy. I mean, there's humor in so many things. I feel like a lot of times people restrict themselves and they're like, oh, you have to take this and make it funny. And it's like everything can be really funny. Um, I started working with uh, another fitness brand to help them with their site because they realize that everything is just becoming so stiff. Like people take everything so seriously and no matter what you're doing in life, whether it's trying to stay in shape or trying to maintain a career or trying to raise a family, whatever it is, you may put out this picture of it being amazing and perfect to the world. 
But behind the scenes, it's a, it's a mess. It's all <laughs> a mess. And all we're trying to do is just not die. <laughs> like <laughs> all we're trying to do every day. We're trying to keep ourselves alive and keep other people alive that we care about. Like that's what life is. So, that's, that's a great way <laughs> to put nice. it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so it's nice as you age and become more attuned with yourself and the world around you. And you're like, you know, all this is funny. Like, I don't look perfect all the time. God help me if I did. That would really suck. And that kind of pressure, I don't think I could take. But, you know, we're all just trying our best. And I think that's, you know, what people want to hear and see now, whether whatever it is that they do. Well, I know you got a busy night ahead of you, so we're going to let you go. But it was great to talk to you, and I hope to have you back soon so we can talk a little yeah, bit longer. Absolutely. I'm uh, yeah, I'm here in Chicago with my grandma. We're staying in a hotel together the next two nights. She's my uh, she's my roadie on this on this mini tour. <laughs> Do you have yeah, anything you want to plug before we go? Yeah, I have a new show coming out on the Tag Network, which kind of showcases some of my humor, fitness, photography stuff, um, which is cool because it's a it's a, a new combination of worlds that I've been exploring over the last year. And um, so that'll be fun. I have a tour coming up in Dubai and in London and just a bunch of really cool shows. And I'm going to be on Fox again this fall. And I'm really sorry there's an ambulance going by. So somebody <laughs> else is trying to not die right now, too. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, just, you know, fun stuff. I'm just excited for some of the things I have coming up. So we'll just have to keep in touch and let you know what's up. Yeah, sounds great. Well, you have a great night. Okay. And uh, good luck tomorrow at the Laugh Factory. It should be a great show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me on. No problem. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Well, one of the things she was talking about was the UK, and we have somebody in the UK who's going to be calling in very soon. His name's Choo Choo Stew. Just started with the podcast on uh, on this past episode. That episode's called Can't Stop the Feeling 2, The Blessercist. We had Dwight McCormick come in to bless the show. He did a great job. Hope you guys check that episode out. It's on the podcast feed now. And I have it up on the website, too, which I've redesigned the website. Every show we've ever done is now there. Before, I just had a link to a different website that I own that had all the archives and show notes. Now, you can see the show notes and the dates that came out. Everything's in one place. Every show we've ever done. So, if you want to go yeah. back to when we were really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first show was, <laughs> the first show that I was a co-host was with um, Mike Canistero and Henry Cuto. Yeah. That's up on the website. Go check there that out. Go. See way, way back in the day. <laughs> Back when I thought it was okay to just take the music out and put it on the feed. And then I realized, hey, might need to edit this. But I think we got Choo Choo Stew on the line. Is that right? Oh, uh, well, he, he's coming up. He popped up oh, there. Okay. I'm set up and ready. So, uh. Well, he started doing a new segment called Totally From UK Today. It's a good segment. I've been wanting to do that ever since the podcast started. One of the taglines I wanted to have for the podcast was from the UK to L.A., and for one reason or another, that never transpired. And now I can finally say from the UK to LA, we don't have cookies as uh, got people from all over the world. Okay, uh, Choo Choo Stew. Hi, good evening. How are you doing, guys? All good. right. Your uh, segment just debuted on Monday, totally from UK today. It was very entertaining. I wanted to thank you for coming on board the podcast. Oh, it's, you're welcome. It's uh, good to be part of it. And thank you for being on the radio show. This is uh, our first time having somebody from the UK on, so want to thank you for that, too. It's really nice to have you on. Wow, a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're representing your country. Exactly. <laughs> but you do quite a few podcasts, and you uh, co-host your own. That's uh, Cave Crew Radio, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't call it my own. I, I've called myself the junior intern. Oh, okay. <laughs> I uh, I sweep the uh, the proverbial floor and make the teas and coffees. <laughs> um, I'm actually uh, I was a listener turned uh, turned sort of co-presenter, if you will. Okay. And uh, I was asked just to do a segment for them uh, over a year ago now, and uh, since then they haven't been able to get shot of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, spoiler alert: that's what we're doing here too. <laughs> in, in about six months, you're going to be the third chair. Yep, there you go. <laughs> We're grooming you. <laughs> you never know. You never know. 
And one of the things that you're going to be doing for the podcast is just going over some strange news stories that have happened in your country. I've got to try and dig out some weird and wonderful uh, stories for you. For you. Well, you did a good job this week with the exploding pesto sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't quite expecting that. I mean, usually the weird and wonderful comes from Florida. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I love those. I love a good Florida story on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so trying to get weird and wonderful news from the UK, uh, it might be a challenge, but I'm up for it, and uh, I'm going to keep digging about, and I'm sure it's going to, I'm sure it's going to come up for me. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to pit uh, the UK and Florida together once you get some good strange news stories, and see. <laughs> we'll have a contest to see. <laughs> I'm sure we can give them a run for their money. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the ones I see come out of China. I don't know if it's because they just have a large population or if they're just really crazy. But yeah, I yeah, I don't think anything can top the Chinese. But they're, <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful game shows that they do. <laughs> How the hell do they come up with like karaoke and someone giving you a blowjob at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just did a story not too long ago about the Chinese scientists came up with ways to make watermelons harder. I don't know why they thought that that was worth uh, yeah. inventing. <laughs> Maybe they're going to start using them as, using them as missiles or something. <laughs> you never yeah. know. Maybe it's for a new game show they came up with. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they thought that all the way through because in order to eat the watermelon, you have to cut it open. So exactly. making them harder is, is probably not that great. <laughs> And now they're going to have to invent something to cut it with. There yeah. you go. Yeah. They're doubling their money. They're getting you both ways there. <laughs> hey, maybe that's what it is. They're going, <laughs> they're going to come out with their own brand of Ginsu <laughs> knives that, that are but, just focused on cutting these watermelons. That, that's just good business right there. <laughs> <laughs> invent something that's harder for people to get to something they want and then invent a way to get it. And you get them both directions. You seem to be uh, pretty heavily involved in the podcast community over there. I saw that you were at a podcast meetup. I was, yeah. Yeah. Um, as I say, I've been listening to podcasts uh, for a good 10 years now. And when I say I've been listening, I, I listen to probably about 30 hours a week. Wow. wow. <laughs> and, that, and that is purely due to my job. Uh, it's not something I would do if it wasn't for my job. So it sort of passes the time away. And you, you sort of become addicted to them. And uh, your your podcast app starts getting full up when you've had a couple of days off and the stress comes out. Oh, I've got to catch up. But I mean, at the moment, I've sort of uh, I've cut my podcast down to sixty subscriptions. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so it's good uh, you're cutting down. <laughs> I used yeah. to have an office job too, and that was that was a big part of my day was just listening to podcasts. Yeah, uh, podcast is the new radio. I think radio's on its way out and podcast is the way to listen to the media yeah yeah that seems to be how it's going i kind of regret i've always wanted to do a podcast and i've been wanting to do it since at least 2008 if not sooner you know now that i'm doing a podcast i i got in i don't know maybe a decade too late <laughs> i think not that anything's wrong with getting now it's just back then there weren't as many people doing it especially no, suppose, in the comedy world i suppose world. it was easier to make a name for yourself in yeah. the early days, but um, there's always podcasts, uh, new podcasts coming out, and I'm always on the lookout for some new gold to listen to. There's so much out there to choose from, and just any topic. I've seen a guy who does a podcast about riding horses. I mean, you can you can find anything out there if you if you look hard enough. Yeah, and there's most likely a market for whatever you could come up with. There's there's going to be a market for it, whether it's a big market or. A, a small market, but there's definitely people there willing to listen. You know, there's a podcast out there. I forget what it's called, but the whole point of the podcast is to put people to sleep. And I guess yeah. they whisper the whole time and you listen to it when you want to go to sleep <laughs> and it just bores you to sleep. And they find purposefully boring topics to go over. So you'll just fall asleep to their podcast. <laughs> Strangely enough, my daughter downloaded that last night and really? she said she was listening to it. And because I told her about that a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> From what I hear, they get a lot of downloads. So I don't know. Maybe that's going to be my spinoff. A lot of insomnia. <laughs> you just need to add that into your uh, description on the podcast, <laughs> so people can search for it. It's a way to get you, to get new listeners. I'm always looking for ways to market the podcast. 
<laughs> well, I want to thank you for coming on. I know it's getting late over where you are. The bedtime is calling quite soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to plug the, plug the podcast again and your segment, Totally From UK Today. You did a great job. If anybody wants to check that out, that's on this week's episode called uh, Can't Stop the Feeling to the Blessercist. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we had a... Uh, a priest or a reverend, I forget now what the official title is, he came in to bless the show because I've said it's been cursed for, I don't know, three months to a year now. <laughs> so we'll find out if he did his job in about maybe two months. Oh, I he's think. also a comedian, too. He's, he's, yeah. a, he's yeah. a preacher and a comedian. And you can go to PreacherComic.com and learn more about Dwight. <laughs> but is there anything that you'd like to plug before we let you go? Apart from Cave Crew Radio, which uh, was on Wednesday nights and it's now moved to Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. So tomorrow night we'll be uh, streaming live from www.cavecrewradio.com and uh, we'll be on the YouTube as well. So, yeah, check us out, please, all, on all good podcast apps. All right. Sounds great, man. Well, I'm going to let you get some sleep and uh, thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. You take care. You too. Cheers. <laughs> Well, that's our first international caller for the day. And we're moving right along. Yeah. You know. We're going to no, be having no hiccups Mark. yet. What's yeah. <laughs> Pretty nice. Yeah. That blessing worked. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Dwight. <laughs> Next up, we're going to have Marco Fuji on. If you haven't heard of Marco Fuji, very funny guy. He was actually on America's Got Talent doing impressions. And if you want to see his appearance on America's Got Talent, you can go to the website. We don't have cookies.com. It's on the homepage there. Just... Scroll down towards the bottom and you'll see it. I don't really know what to say about the appearance. I will talk to Mark about that momentarily. <laughs> it was uh, it was interesting to watch. So make sure you go there, check it out. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how he felt about it very soon. But Mark's been doing a lot of stuff, especially in TV. He's done a f quite a few movies, too. And I said on the podcast a couple of, uh, couple of weeks back, he was on my very favorite TV show, Nathan For You, I didn't even know he was on the show. Hmm. I was just catching up with it because there was the first season I hadn't seen yet. I just saw the last two. And I'm sitting there watching TV, and all of a sudden, Marco Fuji is on my TV screen, and I about <laughs> lost it. <laughs> I ran and got my wife. I'm like, you have to see this. Well, he, he's uh, He's been a guest on the show a couple times now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think at least twice. Yeah. At least. Yeah, he's, he's always always entertaining, that's for, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> And a good dude. He's just... <laughs> yeah, very optimistic guy, very high energy. A lot of fun to be around. That should be a lot of fun. And I think he'll be up in just a few minutes. Okay. Trying to get everybody in in one show. Yeah. <laughs> or two shows. <laughs> or two shows, actually. But <laughs> We could do a third next week with the people who do the songs for the shows and the people I couldn't get in this week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we, could just keep, we could just keep it going. You, you can have the whole radio show. <laughs> Because we, we haven't had time to get Mike on, and uh, Beach had to schedule for a different time because he wasn't able to come on today. Some stuff came up where he works, and I was going to try to get Mike O'Connell on. I know he's more than willing to do it. I just haven't got back to him about a day. Oh, yeah. And, that, that, I really want him on the radio show. That Mike yeah. O'Connell is... He cracks me up about everything he's done from the, the movie. I don't know if you've ever... Have you seen... Uh, Oh. oh, Living Wake? Yeah. Yeah, Living Wake. Okay, here we go. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Hey, Jason. This is Marco Fuji. He's yes, a this is Marco Fuji. <laughs> comedian and impressionist. Very good guy. I was just hey. telling everybody, I have the video clip from America's Got Talent on the uh, homepage of the website. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How you was know, I, I never watched that uh, video myself. You know, I, I just couldn't. How was that experience for you? It was very difficult. Very, very difficult. What yeah. you saw was that not, uh, you know, entire process of the auditioning process. Mm -hmm. You know, start with uh, off the camera auditions, three, four auditions. Then they, they put you on, uh, you know, final auditions on, on the camera, which you just saw. Mm -hmm. So it's different different locations but they edited into the one place it looked like I, you know i've been waiting for the auditions all day long then <laughs> <laughs> going to the stage and do the stuff but it's not really you know happened in the 
one place at the same time. Right, just a grueling process to go through. Yeah. As difficult as it was once that experience happened, it, it had to feel good to know that you made it onto the show because there had to be a ton of people just trying to get on there and didn't make it. Right, right. At least I saw 2,000 people in the wow. waiting room. And, uh, you know, first auditions, they cut into, like, uh, let's say, uh, 200 people, 200 acts. Mm -hmm. Then they go on uh, video auditions and they make decisions who are going to be on the last, you know, 25 acts. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been like a three months process. And uh, you cannot tell anyone about that show. It's, uh, you know, I signed for the you know, agreement that uh, I cannot tell anybody else. You know, I be on the show, I, you know, I go on to the next round. I cannot tell you that, but... I now can because <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while ago. So, but uh, you know, I was talking on the podcast a while back about your appearance on Nathan for you. Yes, yes, that is <laughs> that's one of my favorite TV shows, and I've seen I, the last I two didn't seasons. Watch either I never watched that show. So <laughs> I, I know what I did, but I, again, they edited it into you know maybe a few seconds. I, I I'm not sure but uh, you know you tell me what i did <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing because like i said that's my favorite tv show and you were on the first season of it i think it was episode six and i'm just okay. i'm just sitting there getting caught up i'm excited that i have a season a full season to watch next thing i know you just pop up on the tv screen i i lost it because <laughs> <laughs> we've talked over emails back and forth and you know my my daughter loves you so I had oh, to go wow. get her and be like, dude, look, Marco Fuji's on, <laughs> on TV. But it was one of his uh it was one of his business schemes to help people with their funeral packages. And right. it was an upgraded funeral package that you could buy where actors would come in and be sad or have parts to play where like one was a mistress and <laughs> different things like that to, to make the funeral experience more presentable to people who didn't have many people in their lives. <laughs> yes, that's so true. That's so true. That was a great experience, too. I mean, uh, audition was, uh, you know, I find the audition notice via Craigslist, actually. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still get a residual from that show because it's the union gig. So... Yeah, that was my favorite episode ever, just just because you were in it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Thank there, you. Thank there's, you that. <laughs> there's so many of them that I like. As I said a bunch of times already, it's my favorite TV show. But when I seen you were in it, that just sealed the fate. I'm like, this is this is the best episode now. <laughs> <laughs> did, did I speak in uh, Japanese or? <laughs> no, you were in English. But they oh, okay. they actually showed the uh, the process of. Of you um, going for uh, the role. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. We, we did that. I just remember that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Do you remember anything <laughs> about Nathan Fielder on that day? When yeah, you're... I remember that he's a kind of different pe people. Yeah. Maybe he came from <laughs> another planet. And, uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't so sure. Is he, he or he playing the character? I, I can't tell you because uh, even camera is off, he's still in the character. <laughs> you know, I I have that feeling too. I don't know where the character ends and he begins. Uh, he <laughs> he seems like the same person and same person all the time, twenty four seven. Yeah, <laughs> that's him. <laughs> I was going to ask that if anything changed when the cameras went off because he's he's just so stoic and and the way he presents himself just never changes. Yeah, that's so true. Like uh, you know, uh, Andy Kaufman. Yeah, maybe he's a similar, you know, um, character, and uh, you know. Yeah, that's two good comparisons: Andy Kaufman <laughs> and somebody from a different planet. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm just telling you that uh, you know they have. I don't know. I still don't know that you know Nathan is. Uh, he's still playing the character. Or when he go home in the shower by himself, he's still doing that same thing. Or I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a very very good question. But uh, you know, 
Yeah. yeah. Very unique individual. If anybody yeah. hasn't seen the show, check out Nathan for you. It's uh Well, I'm gonna have to check it out now. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Hell of a show. <laughs> <laughs> But you do stand up too over in LA, and uh, you've been doing a lot of shows lately. Yeah, I do more auditions. In fact, I'm waiting for the casting call right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have uh, another audition in ten minutes. Oh wow! <laughs> I got the side in my hand, uh, trying to memorize, uh, you know, these lines right now. Oh. I'm talking to you guys, <laughs> but that's okay. You know? Well, I appreciate you doing the radio show because you've been a part of the podcast since the very first episode. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So I, I had to make sure when I did this episode that you were included because uh, how could I not include you? You're you're the original segment for the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. Yeah. How about you? How about you? You've been doing a stand-up, right? I saw your uh, you know flyers and you're doing a stand-ups. And, uh... I'm mainly sticking with the uh, podcast and radio for right now and just trying to get that going and so far, so good. <laughs> yeah, that's good for you because you have a good voice. You sound like an anchor man. You know. <laughs> Thank you. I have, appreciate have you that. Ever, have you ever thought of doing a newscast or you know something like on TV or you know whatever you know? Well, I've been approached by a couple of different podcasts about doing some things with them, but uh, that's all I can talk about for right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, but uh, I appreciate you saying that. It's very, uh, very kind of you. But no, that's true. That's true. Uh, I'm sure someone else has say, said to you the same questions, uh, you know, and uh, you're doing the right thing. So I don't know, in person, in person, you know, I haven't met you guys yet. <laughs> I saw you guys on uh, the pictures and uh, I haven't seen your videos, but, uh, you know. Yeah, maybe in the future, maybe. Yeah, hopefully uh, one day we'll make that happen. I got a lot of listeners over in San Francisco in the Bay Area, so maybe we'll do a meetup over there sometime, and uh, I can make it down to L.A. and, and hang out with you. That sounds good. Yeah, I'll see yeah, if the uh, radio it. show will yeah. sponsor us. We'll, there you we'll go. do a broadcast from <laughs> L.A. Then. We can even do one on the plane. Yeah, there you go. There. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I've seen you've done a lot of television lately, too. So you've, yeah, you've you stayed know, busy. Yeah, I started in a, as an actor first, and then I added uh, stand-up comedy later. So I've been doing for acting, you know, for, for a long time. And, uh, you know, but uh, definitely the stand-up, you know, give me a more, uh, you know, uh, range of acting skills and mm -hmm. the confidence levels, uh, you know, much higher than before before I met, you know, stand-up. So I really appreciate it. You know, I met uh, stand-up. It sounds funny. Met that sounds like a person. But I, in fact, I had a, a stand-up coach. And uh, he and I, you know, developed my uh, you know, character, you know, materials. And, uh, oh, kind of yeah. there. <laughs> well, you also have done a lot of movies. Uh, one of them was Letters from Me with Jima. Uh, yeah, uh, directed by Clint Eastwood. Oh, wow. You know, his movie is coming out this Saturday, I mean, Friday, Saturday, Tom Hanks, uh, you know. Well, yeah, he's, he's great. He's a great actor, a great director. He doesn't tell us what to do you know, once you're on the stage and on the, you know, on the set, you know. He does just let the actors to do because he trusted. Once you finish the casting process, he doesn't say much. So he's, uh, you know, usually movies shooting takes, you know, at least 12 hours a day, but he set. He doesn't work more than eight hours because he's old. <laughs> so that's true. And he take only, you know, maximum takes like three takes each scene. That's it. So it's so much pressure on me, on uh, the actors. You know, if you messed up, you all, you have only two takes left. <laughs> right. <laughs> the thing is, that movie, I don't know if you watch the movie, it's an all Japanese dialogue. So, you know, they don't know if I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I like, like that. <laughs> but truth of the matter is, uh, you know, there are a few trans translators, you know, Japanese, English, English, Japanese, and they listen to your old dialogue. 
all day long. So, you know. Okay, because I, I was going to ask, since they don't speak Japanese, if you just improv some jokes in there, but made them serious so they bought it and it just got into the yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. In fact, I have a great joke I made right after the, you know, finished the gig, and it was my best comedy jokes ever. Oh. <laughs> it's a killer, killer joke, but it's based on a true story. So the audience listened to me and they really enjoy my joke, you know. That's so true. I, I wouldn't tell you everything right now on the radio, my, but the thing is, you know, I had maybe three auditions, you know, different roles, but they put me on a very small role, and only I had one line in Japanese, and uh, so I got a uh, you know, script three days before the, uh, you know, shooting day. I practiced one line for three days. Wow. <laughs> yeah, very easy in Japanese, just one line, very easy. But it's a military, military, you know, like uh, terms, it's kind of difficult to tell. But anyway, on the set, they changed my line, last minute. Last minute. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. <laughs> so I got so nervous and, uh, you know, because Clint Eastwood was there and the lead actor Ken Watanabe he's an international movie star uh, from Japan he was there and many staff and the crews you know I got so nervous so I, I you know, stumbled my lines in a fast take oops you know <laughs> <laughs> All, I, like I said only I have two takes left <laughs> so I did something you know I, I, I said Gonna, they're not gonna use my you know scene because I I had so much trouble saying those one line, but uh, you know I had a sign for the agreement. They must use it under union con. So they did. They did it really really good. And uh, but I didn't. I couldn't find myself. You know. <laughs> I can see how well, that. I can see how you would yeah. get nervous on the set because there's that's a lot of star power right in oh, front yeah. of you. Yeah. And knowing you and only was, got... Yeah, it was uh, my very first big movie. So, you know, but, uh, you know, I already doing stand-up at that time. It was like a 2007, but, uh, you know, still, you know, was so nervous. Everything, everything. Uh, they put me on uh, military, you know, boots, uh, helmet. Very, very tight. Very, very tight. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't sleep. I slept maybe three hours because of nervousness. Wow. And beyond the set, they changed my line last minute. <laughs> and the, the Japanese interpreter came up to me and said, Hey, can you say that? Can you say that? Blah, 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 blah. No, no. I had to take a no, 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 no. They can't just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a Clint Eastwood impression for us? You punk, make my day, do ya? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you're getting ready for your audition, but I just want to say that I really do appreciate you being a part of the show and coming on the radio today to talk to us as busy as you are. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you. You know, I really enjoy talking talking to you guys. And uh, say hi to your daughter. Will do. All right. All right. You have a great day and good luck with the audition. Thank you. You too, Jason. Don. <laughs> Mark's always a good person to talk to. It's it's always something interesting that you didn't know until you talked to him. <laughs> and I would have never guessed that he would actually be doing the interview from an audition. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Going over his line as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> what a great guy, man. That just shows that he, he puts a lot of effort into what he does, and especially for the podcast. So uh, there's not too many people, I think, would be calling in and, and talking to me about their role on the podcast while they're trying to while memorize the lines. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah, good dude. Absolutely. All right. We'll, uh, we'll play, <laughs> play some older sound garden here, though, and we'll be back here shortly. Well, in case you couldn't tell, this is the life. <laughs> uh, with your host Don Smith and Jason Marshall, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is WWSU one hundred six point nine FM, Fairborn, Dayton's right choice. Uh, the show's been going well so far. Uh, just everybody <laughs> skyping in from all over creation. Uh, yeah, we've no had, uh, Chicago, L.A., 
London so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Coming up, we got New Zealand and Canada. Should awesome. be a good time. Awesome. The next guy we're going to have on, his name's Benny Mack. Really funny guy. If you use Periscope, or if you don't know what Periscope is, it's a lot like Facebook Live. That's how I met this guy, was using Periscope. Really entertaining dude. You should check him out. If you have the Periscope app, just follow at Benny Mac. I've been wanting to get Benny Mac on the podcast ever since I started the podcast. And I did a search for him outside of uh, Periscope just because I saw that there was a podcast hosted by somebody named Benny Mac. Once I started listening to the podcast, I quickly realized this guy is no Benny Mac as far as the one that I wanted. <laughs> but strange note, though, that guy was going to be the person to do the um, Totally From UK Today segment. Oh, the Benny Mac that wasn't yeah. the Benny Mac. You wanted to be Benny Mac. Was, so I was okay. going to have two Benny Macs on the show, and that was going to be a thing, was which Benny Mac are we going to have on this uh, week? Pit them against each other. Yeah. Be a Benny Mac attack. One of the people I wanted to have on the show today, his name's Beach. He does a uh, a podcast called The BS Pod, and he does a new segment for the show called BS Facts. And I'm really hoping that Kenny Bolin will find out I have a BS Facts segment on my show. Yeah. Because he has a lot of BS merchandise. Yes, he does. And we're going to see how that goes. <laughs> Because once you get Kenny riled up, the more riled he gets, yeah. the funnier the man is. Yeah, and, I believe that happened on a, a couple of shows here. <laughs> yeah. And Kenny will be my next podcast guest. That'll be out Monday. So who knows? There you go. Maybe yeah. that'll come up. Maybe that segment will happen to be on his yeah. show and he'll wonder what I'm trying to pull. Yeah. We'll there find you go. out. There you go. Cause that, <laughs> man, two Benny, two Benny Max and uh, two, two scoops of BS. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we pretty much got the rest of the month planned as far as podcasts go, so make sure you subscribe. It's going to be a lot of fun. Who knows? Like I said, maybe next week we can have musical guests from the podcast on. I know Chad Neat, I wanted to have him on today because he lives in Colorado. That would have been another state and another time zone to, to if, deal with. If you, but, if you want to run another show next week, you are welcome to it. Eventually, I got some people that have been asking to be on that I'll have on. But if you want to run the show again next week, we will make sure we get all the new segments and all the new contributors to the podcast covered in three weeks of the radio show. That way you're set. Hopefully. Yeah, (laughs) hopefully. You definitely have a lot of of good quality contributors. That is for sure. Yeah. Everybody who's joined the podcast, I, I couldn't be happier. There's a lot of dedicated people, too. Christina Hughes, if you heard her segment on this week's show, she put a lot of effort into that. You know, you got people like Marco Fuji, who's calling in to to do the show from an audition. I mean, some very talented, dedicated people who got a lot of stuff going on, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to ride on your back to the top, man. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) That's why I'm letting you run the radio show. (laughs) So far, so good. (laughs) Well, Benny Mac's running a little late, apparently, but there's quite a bit of time difference. So, yeah, that's, that's you know, true. I'm looking forward to having Tracy on, too. That's going to be a lot of fun. She's going to be on with her friend uh, Dwayne Melman. Make sure you stay tuned for that. So uh, what's the status update, Jason? Are we? Uh... I haven't heard back from Benny yet, Uh-oh. so I know that he was going to call in right before he was heading to work, so maybe something came up. I let Tracy know that we can have her on a little earlier if she wants to call in so hopefully she'll be doing that soon she's from canada they have an improv group there i'll let her talk all about that once we get her on she's going to be joined like i said by Dwayne melman should be a fun all time right. yeah. i always like having improv people on here yeah yeah their improv group they're based out of toronto i'm sure they got a lot of talented people up there and a lot of people they can pick from all right here we go Tracy's calling in now. hey tracy how's it going hey good how are you i'm doing great We were just talking about your improv group. That's based out of Toronto, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And what's the name of your group again? Uh, Well, our company is Focus Up, and uh, we actually also run a weekly show called Winprov. That's awesome. And you're joined by Dwight Melman, too, right? Uh, Dwayne. Dwayne Dwayne Melman. But he'll answer to anything that starts with a DW. (laughs) You could call him, like, 
<laughs> loser. I've been called worse. <laughs> I have. My last guest was actually named Dwight, and I just had that stuck in my head, so I apologize for that. It's never good to have a Dwight stuck in your head. <laughs> no, no. Better than having him stuck somewhere else. That's that's probably true. I've... <laughs> How long have you guys been involved in Focus Up? Uh, well, Focus Up opened in 2013. Okay. But the but the improvising and stuff like that, we've both been doing that for, God, more like 10 years now. Wow. Eight, 10 years. Yeah, called very close to that, yeah. And, and we're not just counting, like, talking to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> if I count that, I'm probably closer to 30 to odd years. How did you guys get involved in that? <clears throat> Dwayne, you saw uh, Well, it, we actually got started doing uh, improv at, uh, at pirate festivals and, and medieval festivals. Yeah, like Renaissance festivals. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where I started doing that or doing like murder mysteries and stuff like that where you go in a room and you're like, this is who you are. Go bug people for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, shortly after that, we both uh, at different times started at Second City. Went through their uh, their improv program right up until uh, we wrote our own shows, and uh, from there we started our own company. We just had somebody on the show earlier who went through Second City. They were talking about how it seems like there's a brotherhood with that. No matter what class you uh, you came out of there from, has that been yeah. your experience? Absolutely. I mean, especially the people that you end up going through class with, you uh, you end up having that bond with them. It's and in some cases, it's probably like the bond that people have when they go through war together. <laughs> it's because you have those moments where you're like, that was the worst night of my life. I'm so glad I wasn't alone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, Dwayne, Dwayne is married to someone that he met in his class. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get much more bonded than that. No. <laughs> no. Well, except for with crazy glue, and that's something we won't talk about. Is We're she, back to Dwight being stuck somewhere he shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually hoping for the crazy glue discussion myself. Do you want to talk about crazy glue? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I have glued all of my fingers together at some point or other in my life. <laughs> Not Is that all a fact? at once. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but at different times, all of my fingers have been bonded to one or the other of my fingers. <laughs> I've, I've bonded myself to other people's hands like that. Okay, that's rude. What is your your most entertaining finger gluing story? <laughs> Do you have one? <laughs> Dwayne, you have bonded your fingers to other people. That, uh, yeah, that's uh, well, definitely we, we interesting. To, <laughs> yeah, we would have to uh, settle it on just one story, I think. Yeah, so um, what is it? Well, it's... Uh, there was one very recently actually doing some some crafts because my, my wife likes to do crafts and uh, I was in there trying to help her and um, I ended up crazy gluing my fingers uh, at this point uh, to themselves and I wet them down and then I for some stupid reason I decided to give her a pat on the back <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was hoping it was going to go somewhere rude and disgusting when suddenly you have to hear like the wow wow and then the glue. <laughs> yeah, we need to get some sound effects queued up for that. Yeah, there you exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah, no, need some background wah -wah. music. Yeah, I don't I don't I've never actually glued myself to another human being. I don't know if that's because I'm more careful or I'm just more lonely. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you guys ever tried to do stand up or are you just strictly improv? I have never tried like strict stand up per se. I mean, with the show that we host every week, we end up doing little bits of little bits that are sort of like stand up in our intros. But every time I do it, I suck at it. So I'm like, ah, I don't think I want to do this in front of other people who aren't coming here and drinking beer with me. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm just I'm absolutely terrified to do stand up by myself. I think it's I think it's amazing. Like we have stand ups on our show because our show we do like games where anybody can play, and then we'll have stand ups or sketch troops or improv troops or like a mixture of all that as a, a special guest portion of the show. And I just I love when we have stand ups on there, and I'm I'm watching them from the back like a little child watching Santa Claus. Like please, please <laughs> let it rub off on me. Let let some of your brilliance rub off on me. So I don't say that in front of sketch artists because, uh, or in front of uh, comedians, because they'll just take the rub off on me part wrong. 
<laughs> yeah, I can see that, especially with some of the comedians we know. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully there's no children listening right now. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Stand, stand-up is absolutely terrifying. I mean, I would absolutely agree. Yeah. The closest I get is the the like five or six minute opener that we do, and then I'm normally getting booed off the stage at that point. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So I, for I've me, my now. my favorite is improv. Like I love, and I, I particularly love two person like long form improv where you're doing like a scene for one scene for like twelve minutes to fifteen minutes or something like that. That's my favorite because then you just get to develop. You almost get to develop a character. And I think having the people on stage with you helps, too, because it, it takes some of the pressure off. And if they see that something isn't going well, there's always somebody else to chime in and help out. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, though, that Dwayne and I do, though, because we've done so much improv together, is we also mess with each other. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. you know, we'll do the thing where we're like, hey, I, I found the poem that you wrote for me today. I think I'd rather hear you say it rather than just <laughs> read it to myself. Right. Can you read it aloud to me? <laughs> And then, like, you hand them a poem that doesn't exist and they have to make up a poem or whatever. <laughs> like, that's the stuff that once you know someone, I mean, lots of people will do that to each other anyway. But I know that Dwayne won't be mad at me, even though the face on stage that I get is, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, then you, you do that as well. So, you know that you're never going to leave them hanging except when it's on purpose, you know? Well, I've heard Scott Ackerman's podcast, and I've seen him do that. Well, I've heard him do that to other people, and it always entertains me because I know the other person has no idea what to say when he yeah. hands oh, yeah. something like that off. So yeah. and, and they're locked into it. I mean, you, you've given them – you're pretty much forcing them to do it. And if they don't, the audience doesn't like that. I mean, so you gotta you got to please the audience, right? <laughs> yeah, except Dwayne says you got to please the audience, except the last time we did this – he avoided for the whole set reading what was in the piece of paper I gave him. <laughs> the whole set then became about him avoiding it by doing other things. So he 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 preaches it. <laughs> he's he's kind of like my dad. Do as I say, don't do as I do. That's yeah. Do you guys like, have any videos of your improv? I have a couple. I don't think I have our set, Tracy, but I, I do have a couple of different sets on my YouTube channel. Okay, do you want to plug that real quick? Because I, w- I would love to see these videos. Oh, God. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Dwayne Mailman, actually. On If you look that, on, on, look that up on YouTube, you should find those videos real quick. Or is it under Focus Up? Uh, no, I think it is under it's Dwayne. It's under Dwayne Mailman? Okay. Yeah. Dwayne, not Dwight. Yeah, don't Dwayne. look for Dwight. <laughs> you might find some. <laughs> 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 uh, Dwight, getting into things he shouldn't. <laughs> I, I think we now need to do an entire web series on a guy named Dwight who gets into trouble and gets stuck in places all over the world. It's yeah. Glued, glued to other people. Yeah, glued. Oh, my God. Yes. yes. Dwight gets glued to other people. And actually, I love to do like a man on the street thing of like walk up to random strangers and, and glue like, yourself glue to yourself them. Yourself yeah. to them. <laughs> I mean, like, deal with that. <laughs> that would be brilliant. <laughs> Oh, he could be called Dwight Glueman. Done. Done. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do this now. Uh, we'll have to get rights to use Lionel Richie. Stuck on you. <laughs> we got, I hate that song. We got a whole web series now. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah exactly. You guys will be producers. <laughs> I, I would like a bigger dressing room, please. You got it. <laughs> Why not? Oh. You guys are easy. Yeah, Okay, I'd like a, a company car. You got it. Oh, wow. Nice. nice. Do you like okay. trucks? Do I like trucks? Yeah. Sure. It's got okay. four wheels and it runs, right? Yeah. Yeah? I, I don't like trucks like guys like trucks. I was just going to give you Don's. <laughs> <laughs> that was the... All right. <laughs> Why not? One, one question. Do we get to keep whatever we glue ourselves to? Oh, that's a good question. I think that should be a rule. Yeah. You're well, glued to it. Possession yeah. is nine tenths of the law. So is gluing nine eight tenths of the law. That could be the stick. Is we ask the person that we glued, whoever owns whatever you glue yourself to, we ask that question, and at <laughs> the end of the year we find out how many things that you got to keep, and that is the answer. <laughs> the answer. <laughs> 
So the answer to life, the universe, and all things. Yeah, we do this once a week. If it's a twenty six twenty six split, well, it's a wash. But if the majority <laughs> lets you keep it, the answer is yes. <laughs> I think this would make like an interesting series that we could get sponsorship for. Like, I'm sure there's got to be like Elmer's would sponsor. Oh yeah, that. absolutely. Crazy glue. <laughs> Well, it's not crazy. Gorilla, maybe. No, no, crazy glue. The old crazy... Do you, oh, my God, I'm dating myself now. Do you remember those old crazy glue ads where they would have, like, the construction... The hard hat? Workers? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, who would do that? We could come out with our own glue called well-thought-out glue. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just compete with crazy glue because already it sounds better. That's right. It does. It does. Everything that's coming to my head, I just want to find glue puns now. See, I prefer slightly off balance glue. <laughs> it's a little bit crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. We can't say crazy anymore. We have to be like, uh, r- rationally challenged glue. <laughs> Manic glue. Yep. Socially acceptably odd. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. There. That, that should be my name. That should be. <laughs> My name. Morally deficient glue. <laughs> that's Dwight's glue. That's that's not our glue. That's Dwight's glue. I hope this guy Dwight is cool with us picking on him. He should be. He's a preacher, so if he's not, yeah. he'll probably forgive yeah. us. He'll turn the, he'll turn the other cheek. And you can glue something to that too. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, we're all going somewhere really warm. We're glue. <laughs> Uh, I'm mean, like, stick that in your pipe and smoke. <laughs> At least we can huff the fumes. <laughs> Do you guys ever stay on one topic? I've been listening to some of your podcasts. <laughs> Not usually. <No. laughs> it bounces around a lot. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even finish the first topic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was there a topic? That's happened to be quite a bit. <laughs> oh, I think so. Going back, oh. I think the answer was uh, eight years. <laughs> speaking of things that i've been wanting to talk about on the podcast but never stuck to the topic last oh. week we had an improv group in here and i was going to give myself a haircut before i came on the air and i got started and i thought you know what if i just stop now it's perfect where i wear a hat nobody thinks that i've done anything with my hair but if i take my hat off Half of my head shaved. Wouldn't it be really funny if I tell these guys I was running late, I was going to get a haircut, but I didn't have time. And then sometime during the interview or afterwards when I'm talking to the guys, I take my hat off, scratch my head, and put it back on just casually. And there's this half-shaven head. And I completely forgot to do it. And then my wife starts laughing at me saying, well, that's better than the gag you were going to do because now it's on you that you didn't do it. (laughs) <laughs> I meant to talk about that on the podcast Monday. Totally oh. forgot then, too. <laughs> so you've, for, you've forgotten your own hilarious joke. Yeah. And yeah. everybody likes a sight gag on the radio. Right. That's <laughs> perfect. It's the best place for it. I was going to say, I, I totally have the face for radio. It's awesome. So I'm, I'm doing a sight gag right now. It's just my face. <laughs> I just really thought, have no idea how funny it is. <laughs> I just thought it would be a good joke for me, for everybody at home to hear all these people laughing for absolutely no reason. (laughs) (laughs) It didn't work out that way. They were like, man, he said he was going to read a horoscope, and all of a sudden everybody just died laughing. (laughs) Exactly. So bizarre. Well, I'll I'll tell you, just so you don't feel bad, I totally forgot that I had only shaved one leg today. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm, I'm lopsided. One leg is making noise, and the other leg isn't. I feel like we got that second city bonding going on right now. (laughs) I've talked to you about my leg hair, doing myself to myself. About being lopsided. (laughs) Hey, there are some things we save for the second interview. (laughs) Don't, yeah. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about while I have you here is an international improv show that we're hoping to do sometime in uh, October or November. And that should be a lot of fun. We're going to have somebody on from the UK. You guys will be a part of that. People from 42nd City and uh, a few other people in the U.S. Yeah, it's it sounds like an awesome idea. I'm really I I just hope I don't pull out a British accent and embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm governor, and they'll be like, "What is that?" 
Yes. So when you said not pull out the accent and embarrass yourself, you didn't mean now. I know. Right, and then, right. And there's a British person on. You guys aren't British, are you? No, no. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are less British than we are because we're from Canada, so we're closer to being British than you are. <laughs> we still use all the U's and pronounce all the letters in our words. Yeah, those U's just piss me off. I'm <laughs> Personally, I have a vendetta against Z or Z. Yeah, yeah, I don't care for that either. That's just, yeah. <laughs> Why use a Z? All you need is an S. Sizzle. It sounds like sizzle. It's the same thing. <laughs> Oh, good. Just well, nowadays, finish. though, they're shortening yeah. everything, right? So I think eventually we'll have like three letters. It'll be WTF, and that'll be it. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's what people are thinking right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are these idiots from Canada? You know what? We're the people wow, who give Canada yeah. a bad name. <laughs> Uh, I'm speaking, I was going to say we absolutely are because you said WTF, and I'm sitting, my, I'm sitting here thinking, what does that mean? Yeah, here's, <laughs> what the f does that? I'm mean? a little slow right now. <laughs> Mark Maron would be very disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> what could you make out of those three letters? Like mm. wandering <laughs> through forests. Why the face? <laughs> <laughs> Why the face? Walk the. I don't know. I can't think of a Chinese vegetable that starts with an F. <laughs> I can't either. I was, <laughs> I was trying to think of there one with so you. There are so many. When you, why can you just not think of a Chinese vegetable that starts with an F when you need one? <laughs> that actually That's a good point. The use of Chinese vegetables. The use of Chinese vegetables that start with the letter F? Yeah. That sounds like an improv game. We need to start. It's, it's Frunions. <laughs> <laughs> No, nope, nope. that's a thing. That's a different Fun, thing. Funions are a thing. No, I said frunions. They're they're French onions. Got now, j- just to let you know, we are live on the radio, so there's only so many f words we can take. <laughs> <laughs> and we, <laughs> we gotta cut you off at some point. <laughs> yeah, we've already hit our limit with our first guest. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, see, now I'm curious which F words are bad. Is there just the one that's bad, or are there other ones that are still bad on radio? Oh, I don't know. I'm just worried about the one. Can we get fart? a list? Can we get a that's list? That's the one. Fart. Fart is yeah. the one. Fart <laughs> is the one. I'm going to have to bleep that. <laughs> you should just put a fart noise over it. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's what I would, That's how I bleep everything, actually. <laughs> A real one? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's improv. <laughs> you can do that on command. It's That's a special power. gift. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Teach me your ways, oh, oh wise one. Yep. Well, that's <laughs> kind of like not. Second City, but it's Windy City. Yes. <laughs> that's the Chicago version. Yes. <laughs> Well, you're lucky because we are, being Canadian, you're not going to have to bleep most of what we say because we're too polite to actually say. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you haven't been in a car with me lately, have you? <laughs> oh, I have. Speaking of a windy city. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Few choice words come out of my mouth every time I'm in a car. I think that's only natural. Yeah. Is, it, like, yeah. is, is that just me or is that everybody? I yell at everybody that I know when I'm driving. <laughs> You yell at everybody yeah, you know. Pretty much. You like, just get your mom on speaker yeah. phone and be like, Mom, <laughs> you biatch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's close to swearing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. It's like fudge when you're a kid, right? You could say fudge and your right. mom would be like, eh. oh, okay, you said fudge. Right, biatch is fine because it's elongated and fun. That makes it more fun, so it's that's good. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the Canadian version of the real word. Exactly. Actually, what just reminded me, my mom didn't want me using words that sounded like the swear words, so I still got in trouble if I said, what the fudge? And she's <laughs> like, don't say that. And I'm like, but it's the good word. And she's like, no, you're using it to replace the bad word. I know what you're meaning to say. <laughs> the intent is still there. Yes. The thought police. Gosh. She's whiz mom. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, before we let you go, we were talking on Twitter earlier about hopefully you guys may be doing some sketches for the podcast. You know, if that takes place, I'm really looking forward to that. But Yeah, we'd love to do that. For sure. 
Well, I'll include you to the uh, bio section on the website. That's shaping up pretty nicely. <laughs> awesome. So, can't wait to have you guys on board. It's it's really been a lot of fun having you on. Do you guys have anything you want to plug? Um, well, I mean, if there's anybody coming up to the Toronto area, we have our show that's every Monday night called Winprov, uh, right in the downtown Toronto area. It's uh, 8.30 to about 10.30 and uh, it's pay what you can, so you don't even have to have a lot of bucks. And, I mean, yeah. your money goes further than ours, so. <laughs> <laughs> you and, throw and, up an American dollar, yeah. we'd be like, woo we're going to retire. People retire. Also, uh, you can join the Facebook group, which is Winprov or, uh, or, or Comedy 292. We have a Facebook group there as well. We have way too many names. Yeah, way too many. <laughs> um, also, uh, that uh, the videos you were looking for are indeed under Dwayne Mailman, if you can believe that, M-A-I-L-M-A-N, on, uh, on YouTube. So check those out as well. And look for new ones coming soon with Dwight yeah. Glooman. Yes, yeah, exactly. Dwight Glooman. Yeah. <laughs> the Glooman Prize. <laughs> the Glooman Prize. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ah, Dwight gets glued. <laughs> well, thanks. That should be wrong. It could be. <laughs> I can't really think of the right way to do it. I'm not sure. I think if I think if Dwayne did it, people would be freaked out. I think if I did it, people would be like, "What is this weird lady doing?" <laughs> like, I think women can get away with stuff that men can't. You got that right. Yeah, that's true. I <laughs> that's don't think true. I could ever get away with gluing myself to somebody. Just a <laughs> random stranger. I just don't think it would go over well. Yeah. <laughs> Could you glue yourself to someone you know? In my drinking days, I think it would be okay, but I run with a different crowd now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it would go well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just oh, yeah. got to go somewhere where people are drinking then. I'm pretty sure I probably have done that in my drinking days. I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I've done about everything. Yeah, that's... <laughs> All right, I got my keys. I got my wallet. I got my glue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the bar. <laughs> Let's get this party started. <laughs> it is how they come up with new inventions. It's like I don't want to lose my keys, so I'm going to glue them to my phone. Now I have keyless entry, right? Yeah, there you go. No, that wouldn't work. Camera phone. That's where that came from. Yeah. They glued a camera to you. <laughs> Necessity is the mother yeah. of invention. Right? Yeah. Well, that's basically all we invent anymore is just things that do things that another thing already did. <laughs> yeah, we just stick everything together. That's... It's true, except I'm, for I'm... Facebook. Facebook has done a very good job of separating itself from things that was already in itself. But is it really something we need? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a universal answer. Yeah. yeah, I waste so much of yeah. my life looking at puppy and kitten videos on Facebook and avoiding videos of spiders that I just. <laughs> such a waste of time <laughs> so if anybody wants to send tracy spider no, videos uh, no. i want to send her videos of people gluing spiders to kittens that's <laughs> oh my god 16 legged creatures <laughs> oh my god i will rain down internet fire on you <laughs> If anybody's listening, don't glue spiders to kittens. No, that would be wrong. <laughs> don't glue spiders to anything. I mean, as much as I hate spiders, don't glue, don't do that to poor spiders either. But no, especially not kittens. Have you seen the videos where a cat will be eating or not paying attention? Somebody puts a cucumber behind it, and when it turns around, it is scared to death. I know. Oh my god, so funny! <laughs> but I tried it. My cat is just like whatevs. What yeah, my. Mine doesn't care either. <laughs> I, I tried it too, uh, but people don't find cucumbers all that scary. <laughs> I, I, I have snuck up behind people with a cucumber, and they're not scared at all. <laughs> well, the best thing to do is, like, when they're asleep, put the cucumber in the bed with them, and they will really be freaked out wondering how it got there. That's the best way to scare somebody with a cucumber. Or they'll be wondering what the message is. Because if you right. wake up with a horse head in your bed, you know you're dead, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but if it's a cucumber, cucumber, what do you do? It's like the farm gang. <laughs> <laughs> it's not organic. Yep. <laughs> the vegans are after you. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to do? Kill me? That would be a murder. Did you say kill me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish. I mean, yeah. It's yes and there. Yes and. <laughs> and I said, let us all be friends. 
Ah, I love you guys. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. I'm really glad that I had you guys on. Thank you. Well, hopefully we'll get to come back. For sure, yeah. Yeah, it's been a blast. Uh, real quick, is there anything else you guys want to plug your Twitter handles or anything like that? I'm uh, sure. Mine's Tracy underscore Roland because I want to keep punctuation that no one uses anymore alive. <laughs> uh, and I think there might be a number one in that somewhere. I'm, You're the worst. Dude. I am from the worst. I'm like the worst social media person ever. It's Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, no extra E's, Roland, R-O-W-L-A-N-D. You'll find me. How about you, Dwight? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's about it. I think I said all the stuff that, that has my What's name attached. Twitter? I don't have Twitter. I'm I live you in the do Stone have Age. Twitter. I text. I do I? You. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I'm yeah. actually looking it up right now. Clearly, the mailman doesn't deliver. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the name of the show. <laughs> the mailman doesn't deliver. He doesn't talk like that. It's Dwayne. Oh, it's Dwayne underscore mailman. Oh, you, <laughs> you created that for him, didn't you? <laughs> no, well, maybe. I don't know. Did I? No, no, yeah, no, yeah. I feel like the only people that should really be using underscore is musicians, but neither one of us are really musical. Well, Dwayne sings, but not me. So. Can we get a couple of bars? Uh, I think we should just go to the bar. Kelsey's. Uh, Kelsey's is down the street. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Sing, you dumbass. <laughs> I don't know that song. He doesn't so. like being put on the spot. God, it's like you expect me to perform or something. Yeah, yeah. dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> He's dancing now. It's, a, it's not good thing. Is the video on? Can uh, we get video no, of that? No, no video. Okay, no. Uh, I told them my face would be frightening. <laughs> Do you guys have any listeners left? Have you, like, lost people? <laughs> It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've always wanted to say in the podcast about half an hour in is if you're just joining us, my guest today is, <laughs> and it's very odd that you fast forwarded to 30 minutes into the show. <laughs> <laughs> I always yeah. forget to do that. <laughs> there, we'll do it right now. It's 30 minutes. Do it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if you're just joining us on the podcast, my guest today is Tracy Rowland and Dwayne Melman. And it's very odd that you fast forwarded to uh, an hour and 40 minutes into the show. Yeah. <laughs> you missed so much. Rewind it. Play it again. You might want to at least catch the opening guest. <laughs> I did just do a little dance there because you didn't call me Dwight. <laughs> Eventually, everybody comes around to Dwayne. Yeah. I like that. I think that should be our slogan. Nope. <laughs> that is a good tagline. <laughs> yeah, Shush, don't, don't, don't down. <laughs> now every show is going to end with that. That's right. Yeah, everybody, but he'll make it rude. I guarantee you, he'll make it rude. <laughs> at That's the very, a good challenge. At the very least, you can have some business cards made with that on there. Oh, yeah. I think it's a keeper. <laughs> That's right. Uh, See, I think that's good if you were still dating. Then it'd be on your dating profile. Eventually, everybody comes around to date. Wait, just because I'm married doesn't mean I stop like dating. a last resort. <laughs> I don't know if you heard Amanda in the background. Just went, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, great. thanks for coming on. It's been a great time. And hopefully, we'll have you guys back real soon. And looking forward to doing the improv show with you in the next couple of months. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, you guys take care. You too. Bye, guys. Bye. See ya. Oh, that was a lot of fun, man. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was definitely a lot of fun. Like I said earlier, it's always a great time with improv people. You never know what's going to happen, but you know it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, th I think that'll about do us. Great show. Again, oh, man, you, you do a heck of a job putting these shows together. I think uh, think there might be a job in this in this <laughs> studio for you if you want. There's a Go lot ahead. of talented people out there, and... Um, you know, it's it's been a really good time meeting so many people that absolutely are so fun and uh, contribute a lot, not only to the show, but just comedy in general. Yeah, you're definitely finding a lot of really great uh, contributors and good people to be involved with the show. So I think we're going to call it a night on that note. Anything you want to plug? Anything you want to say? Or? Uh, just check out WeDon'tHaveCookies.com. Totally revamped the whole site. All the shows are posted there now. 
Uh, got ways if you want to try to help the show that are free for you to do. Won't take much time. Go there, check that section out. You can always find out how to contact us by going to the contact section too. Coming up on Monday, I'll have Kenny Bolin on the show. That's always going to be a good time. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. Follow me on Twitter at Jason Marshall too if you want to. Thanks for following me if you follow me too. I appreciate that. It always makes me feel good. Thanks for putting together another great show. And, uh, and everybody out there, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show and leave a review. See you Monday. She, yeah, you, you uh, that that was you had booked the show.